love making things. And my current fixation has been around uh, these two little things right here called circular knitting machines. Now, if you haven't heard of circular knitting machines, they are fantastic. You still have to do the physical work. There is still some skill involved, right? It's not gonna do it for you, but there's so many things you can make. So a couple of things that you can do. I made a, a ton of these cute little cup cozies with the small one. Um, with the big one, I've made like cute little beanies, little holiday pumpkins. And uh, my most recent project that I love, um, in fact, I want to make some more of these, are fingerless gloves. And then I also um, am using a little bit of an advanced technique called double stitching, which if you're interested in learning about that, I can certainly do a video on how to do this after um, you make your project. So there are so many things you can do with these knitting machines. And uh, I know that they are really popular and I love them. And before I even went out and bought one, um, I went online to do some research. I wanted to find out what do I need to know, uh, help me get started videos, right? And I didn't find a lot of information, which was kind of a bummer. So if you know anything about me, I'm the type of person that just loves to dive right in, spend tons of time trying to figure things out, trying to break the system. Um, as it were, so that I can give you my top tips and tricks. And so that is what this video is going to be today. It is going to be my top 10 tips and tricks for the circular knitting machines, whether it's a Centro, um, Addy, or whatever, you know, machines are out there, but they are going to be all relevant. And these are the, the tips that I wish that I knew. So this video will be good for the beginner, especially for the beginner, but also if you've been using them for a while, Hopefully you might get one little nugget that'll help you be more successful with your projects. Also, as always, I'm always learning and I love hearing from all of you on the tips and tricks and all the things that you have um, that you do in your projects. So please down below, share your tips, share your tricks. I would love to get in there and try them myself um, because I'm always open to learning. And with that said, let's just dive in to the top tip tip easy for me to say, my top 10 tips and tricks for the circular knitting machine. So here we have the 48 pin Centro, and then I also have the little 22 pin Centro as well. I love both of them. They work for different projects. So my first tip, which I think is super important for whatever machine you have, unless they already have this marked, is with your machines, they have pins, as I mentioned, there is going to be the last pin of your machine, which is how you're going to actually start your projects. When you take your yarn, you'll end up um, casting on, okay, this is a really bad example because this is already used, but you'll end up casting on with this last pin right here. Now the pin itself is white, so it does stand out from the other pink pins that are here. However, when you're working on a project that say has 90 rows and you want to know how much further you need to go, let's say you're running low on yarn or you don't know if you, um, you know, want to make it that big, you really want to know where this pin is. So what my first and foremost tip is to mark your machine. When I first got it, I actually added some nail polish on here and it didn't really um, stand out. So I just took a black Sharpie and I marked it. You don't want anything that's going to disrupt this um, little whatever doodad you call this right here, because the yarn still needs to be able to slide smoothly off. So um, I wouldn't recommend doing like an epoxy or glue or anything like that, but just a little mark here makes a big difference. And as you get more advanced with your machine, you may also find it helpful. They do have numbers kind of hidden here. So if you're going to do more of like the panels and you only want to use like, you know, number 12 through 24, um, it's going to be a lot easier if you can see those numbers much more clearly. So step number or tip number one, make sure you mark that last pin. Tip number two. So your machine, especially if you have the Centro 48, it does come with um, suction cups on the bottom. The Centro 22 does not. It just has these little rubber feet right here. Uh, so one of the things my second tip is, especially for the bigger machine, clamp it down. Get some way to connect this to the area that you're going to be working at. If you do not, you'll find that it tips all over the place. It slips back and forth. It doesn't quite work. So I actually saw um, a few different people say that you can get clamps at the home um, improvement store and just clamp them to a table. 
that doesn't quite work here. If you'll notice, um, my table is actually very large. This is my sewing table, by the way, um, which has been taken over by my current knitting um, machine obsession. But what I ended up doing is even with the suction cups on this flat table, I still found that it slipped around. So I actually grabbed a tool that you might already have in your craft room. And that is just scotch double-sided tape. That's it. I use double-sided tape. Um, I put the double-sided tape on the suction cups and then to the table. So now it's pretty sturdy, but if I do need to remove this, which I will because I'm getting back into a sewing project here soon, um, it's going to be pretty easy to clear off because I'll just take the tape off and it prevents moving. So that is tip number two. You do want to anchor your machine down somehow, um, the bigger machine specifically. Because this little, the little one right here, I take this places, um, you know, my husband will be using this upstairs sometimes. Yes, I roped him into um, <laughs> working on projects. So this one, I really don't need to um, clamp down because these are smaller projects, but certainly on the bigger one, uh, double-sided tape. That is my tip number two to anchoring this to your workstation. All right, and tip number three. So tip number three has to do with the counter. So with this machine specifically, um, the counters have a tendency to go out. In fact, the smaller version, this 22 pin does not even have a counter. You're going to have to do all of that manually. Um, but one of the things mine hasn't gone out yet and I have used it so, so, so much. Um, it hasn't gone out yet, but I do find that it is a little inaccurate. Sometimes it might skip a stitch here and there. So I still count in my head. Um, but most of the projects I've been working on have been pretty flexible, right? If I'm doing a beanie with 90 rows and I accidentally get 92 or 89, it's really not the end of the world. But when I'm getting into more of the like projects that require um, double stitching, you know, if I'm doing something like this, I need to make sure I have the right amount. Or if I'm doing matching um, arm warmers, I do need to make sure that they are the same size. So my tip number three is to get a counter of some kind. And uh, I'll tell you, I actually purchased a counter um, on the app store for $1.99. It's a touch counter. So I can, um, in fact, I'll pop up an image here on the screen of what it looks like in action. But all it is, is you hold, um, you have your phone down here and then as you go around you just kind of click it. I also, yes, I have also been keeping track on paper. Um, sometimes that works a little bit easier for me if I'm recording uh, for a video, but I would recommend getting a counter of some kind. Also, I have seen some people, and this is a little more advanced, but I've sent, seen some people that have installed additional counters on their Centro specifically. So you can um, kind of adjust your machine. I don't know what the performance um, level or what happens with the performance when you do that. A lot of the people that I've seen do that, those are the same people that are having attachments on here with the screwdrivers and, and the electric. I don't need that much. I'm not, you know, trying to make a hundred hats in a day. In fact, I really like using the handle. It's, it's very comforting and soothing for me. So that is my third tip. Third tip, um, get yourself a counter app, some way to keep track of your rows, especially for the smaller ones. Um, if you lose track of your rows, it's really hard to pick up where you left off. All right, tip number four has to do with the way you use the machine. So you may have heard, if you've watched a lot of videos on circular knitting machines, people talk about something called waste yarn. And waste yarn is definitely recommended for the Centro in particular. I've also seen it recommended for the Addy machines if you have those. Um, but essentially waste yarn just gives you a much cleaner finish on the bottom of a project. All right, so let me show you an example. So this is a sample I just did. Um, I just had it sitting here. So I used the waste yarn on the top and the bottom, and you can see it is nice and clean. It's laying pretty flat. Um, I haven't finished it or anything. This was just a sample. But then on this beanie right here that I made when I first started, I just did this cute little double stitch. Super cute, right? But anyway, you'll see that this one, I did not use waste yarn. And so it's kind of uneven. It's bubbly. It's, and luckily this is just kind of a roll top, but the end doesn't look as great. So, so with that said, my top tip number four is to use waste yarn, but there's a specific way that I recommend using waste yarn for the bottom of your project. So with waste yarn, essentially you're taking a contrasting color to what your project is going to be. And so you're just going to cast on like you normally do. All 
All right, so now you're gonna do, since this is the bottom, um, one of the things as you start to uh, work on your projects with, with waste yarn, you'll find that the bottom is always harder to take off because you it doesn't just unravel like the top. There is a connecting string, which is this first string here, um, that you're gonna have to pull out first before you can unravel and disconnect your waste yarn. So there is a tip for you in this. Um, we're gonna just cast on here. Okay, so normally what you would do is there's your cat, you know, however many rows you want between, you know, five rows is probably fine. But something that I recommend is using some, I heard someone refer to this, so this is what I'm calling it now, a ravel cord. And essentially what that is, is it's one single row, one single row of uh, regular yarn that we are going to uh, switch to. And this will make casting off so much easier. So we stopped with our waste yarn right here. Remember, we marked that pin right here. So then we have this marked here, and then we're going to just go around with another color that is not your working yarn. Back here to the last pin. So we just essentially created what this is gonna do, this ravel cord is at the end, it makes it a lot easier to take off the bottom waist yarn. So with this tip number four, you're gonna find that this will make your life so much easier when you are casting off with the project, um, or not when you're casting off, when you're finishing the project, because you'll, much e you'll be able to remove this waist yarn much easier. All right, tip number five. So tip number five has to do with how you actually hold the yarn when you are working on your projects. So with your projects, if you're using like a big skein, so let's say, grab this one that's just sitting here. So let's say you have one of these big old Pound of Love by Lion Brand, which I actually definitely recommend. This works so well, um, but it's so big and it's so heavy. And if you try just uh, not holding or not pulling out enough yarn for this, you're going to find a lot of problems incur. So my tip number five is just to make sure that you unravel enough yarn um, so that you have it loose or pulling wherever you are. And then that way it won't get stuck. But in addition to that, what I really recommend, pull this over here so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, what I really recommend too is, here we go, once we put that in there, you're gonna find that holding the yarn with your left hand can also be a huge, huge help to you. Because if you are pulling out all of that yarn, which I just recommended, um, when you pull out yarn, what can happen, and I'm gonna show you an example here, it can get knotted right? You've had this happen um, where you pulled out or you unraveled it and now it's in a big old knot. Well, if you're not holding on to your yarn here, um, what can happen is that knot can get stuck in your tensioner and then snap your tensioner right off. Or um, best case scenario, it doesn't get stuck in your tensioner and instead uh, ruins the tension throughout your project. So definitely make sure. Cool. And you'll see all I'm doing is holding on to it just like this because now we get here and there's that little knot there and if I wasn't holding it then it might get stuck I realize this is probably bad yarn this was just laying on the ground so I just chose this bad choice all right let's go around a few okay tip number six. So we're on tip number six. Let's talk about color changes. So color changes are pretty simple when it comes to this machine. Um, I did find a lot of people do it a lot more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, and also one of the things that was annoying to me was that whenever I made a color change, you could tell it would have that step up, right? So instead of getting a nice clean um, color change, you were finding there's the color change and there's the step up. And it was super frustrating to me. So I figured out this is how we can do it. And it's so easy to do. It just creates a little bit of a manual step. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to cut off and it doesn't have to be a long amount, but it can be like, I don't know, 
few inches or so. So we're going to cut off the working yarn. I know that seems scary, right? But we're done with it. So we don't need that. Okay. Keep it under that white pin and then just put it into the center. Then we're going to take our next color. Let's go with just another color here. Again, you don't need much of a tail. You're going to pop it in and then just hold the current working yarn in this yarn. Give it a little tension. Make sure that it goes under that pin. And then we're going to go all the way around until we get back to that last pin. Okay, switched angles, so hopefully this makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so we've come back around here. This is our last pin, and this is the next pin. And you'll see that it's the same. I'm going to go a little bit further over. You're going to see we have the same colors showing up. So the way that you're going to get nice, clean color changes is we're going to take this piece of yarn. We're going to put it behind, make sure it snaps under there. And then we want to pull this little piece right here under the hook. And then just go all the way around. And you're just going to go slow, make sure that all of them get under the pins. And then we'll just do a couple of rounds here and we'll do one more color change just to show you how easy that is. All right. So when you get again to the end of your color, just snip it off, give it a few inches. Um, oh, other thing I forgot to mention before we go on to the other color change is we do want to tie those together in a loose knot from one color to the other. Just tie it in a loose knot. Don't do a double knot yet because you actually want to go back and adjust that knot um, from the inside when you're done with the project, just to make sure the tension is correct. Okay, so again, to switch the color, we're gonna put the current color in the center, grab the new color, Hold on to that, give it a little tension pull. Okay, and then we're gonna go around until we get Okay, so here we are, back color on color. As a reminder, pull it down, snap it under there, and then pull that up. Okay, tip number seven, along the same realms of what we've been talking about, but casting off with waste yarn is definitely a tip number seven. So uh, you can, if you have been doing this a while, you know that you can actually cast off of your machine. Um, essentially, you cut enough of the yarn, and then after you go around one time to lock in the yarn, then you can go through and you can just pick up the loops through the yarn here and it's great and it works really well if you're going to be doing any sort of cinching where you don't have to have really nice clean edges however waste yarn is a time saver as well and i'll tell you um i have my husband doing some projects as i mentioned he's been making um, those cup cozies with the smaller centro and so with him he doesn't have time and he doesn't even want to even take the time which i totally get um, of going through and trying to get all the loops without missing them. So instead he uses waste yarn to cast off so quickly. So if you haven't used, and again, this is, this is just a basic, this is something that you may already know how to do, but I do think it warrants being in the top 10. So to cast off, you leave them the amount of tail that you're going to need for the project. If let's say you were going to be finishing this with crochet, you'd probably want to leave, um, uh, well, or with a needle, you'll want to leave at least a tail so that you can weave everything in. Um, this is just a demo sample. So we're just going to cut off a little bit here, put that through, and then we're just going to add our waist yarn. So 
So the top waist yarn, I usually recommend doing at least five. And the reason for that is it's going to be a lot more temperamental. Um, essentially, if you take this um, only do a couple of rows of the waist yarn, these can unravel very quickly from pretty much anywhere on the project. So I definitely recommend on the top, we don't need a ravel cord, but we definitely want to do at least five. Um, I'm actually using some waist yarn for my smaller machine. So I only had a couple of rows here, but I do want to show you again, the tip for casting off with this. So now, you know, I would just honestly, what we typically do is once you get to your five rows or whatever, just cut the yarn and then continue to crank until it, the work just falls off of your project. There we go. So that is tip number seven, casting off with waste yarn. Uh, save yourself so much time. Tip number eight, or how do you do that? Five, six, seven, eight. Tip, num tip number eight also has to do with casting off. Um, if you are not gonna use waste yarn to cast off, let's say that you're doing a beanie that just has like a cinched um, top, then you may not wanna you know, dive into the waste yarn path. So a couple of things about your uh, casting off without waste yarn. Number one, your machine is going to come most likely with some different tools. So you might see some needles that look like this. These are the three that came. Um, I don't remember which one because, you know, I have both of them. Uh, but I will tell you the most important, most important needles that you'll probably use are a really long needle like this, or this one didn't come with it, but I definitely recommend getting yourself a curved needle, especially if you're using the smaller Centro. So this needle right here, um, this really long one works so well for the big 48 because I, I like to pick up multiple loops at a time and it's big enough that they're not going to slide right off. So using the long one for the big machine um, works really well. It doesn't work too well for this one because it's a little bit too big. So the curved one, it's so important because it helps you get directly under these little tiny loops so you don't drop any. Also, when you're going to do this, when you cast off or when you cut off your working yarn, the easiest way to find out how much you need is I typically go around the machine like once or twice, depending on what I'm going to be doing. So let's go ahead and cast off. Again, I don't have this one. I don't have this one anchored down. And this yarn is not the best. That's why I'm using it for sample. Okay. So I'll show you how much easier this is. So with the hook, this one's kind of slipping out there. Boom. It's already there. And then holding on to this. So another tip about, um, kind of along these tip number eight casting off lines is if you, when you go to pull the working yarn through, put your finger over the loop that's right next to it on the left side. So then it doesn't pop off. So many times I see like you're yanking on it, maybe it gets stuck and then that pops right off and then maybe you miss it and you don't want that to happen. So put it through, just put your finger down. Easy. And then you can start getting confident, especially with the hooked one, and you can just get a few at a time. I usually end up getting like, once it gets really close to the tip, then I stop. Oops. So take off a few. The machine's so small, I just turn it itself. I know you can use the handle, but for some reason, this is how I just started doing it. And of course, I just picked that one up incorrectly. There we go. No, don't, don't pop off. Again, hold that down with your finger and then pull the yarn through. And you can get these little needles. This I already had because I have some other, some other tool that requires this type of needle. Um, but you can get them pretty much anywhere, online, Amazon, one of your craft stores. And that is tip number eight. Okay, and tip number nine, uh, and I think this is super important, is to keep a knitting journal. So uh, as I started doing research, I kept finding all these projects that I wanted to do, or I would be playing around, and I discovered that, you know, oh, 
90 rows works really well with this project, but 95 works well with this project. Uh, it's really important to keep track of that. So in my knitting machine journal, not only do I have um, a project planning page so I can like map out my project plans. Also, I have grids in here so that I can um, do some designing if I need to. But I also, and this is really important, keep a yarn log. One of the um, constant pieces of feedback that I get online when I talk about knitting machines is people say that they've heard that they are horrible with yarn, that they skip stitches, they drop stitches. And yeah, it can absolutely happen. It is a tool. And so you have to be able to do all those little things like hold on to the yarn, make sure that you're keeping the tension correct. Um, these are all important things, but also the yarn choice is huge. So I have found four gauge and below typically works the best. So I just have been keeping track of like my favorite yarns, the yarns that I have marked on here, do not use, <laughs> do not use like cotton yarn is awful. Um, it's just, it's a pain. Also, I found that yarn that has multiple colors in the skein, even if it is a four gauge or a worsted, um, yarn, I still find that it gets stuck and it just, it takes a lot more effort to make it work. So tip number nine, keep a journal, keep a log, keep track of the yarn that you uh, love with it, that you hate with it and check with other people and see what is working for them. And my final tip, which I recommend for every Every single project you get into is to get in there, have fun, which I know is kind of a really trite tip, but experiment. I think that's the biggest tip. Number 10 is to experiment, play around, see what works for you. Because even if something works for one person, it may not be something that you find comfortable or, you know, even a project that you're like that. I don't even like that project. So uh, look online, look on YouTube, TikTok, Reels, wherever you, Facebook, whatever it is, wherever you find your social media, um, search for projects, see what everyone's working on, see what other tips and tricks are out there. Like I said, I'm always learning myself. So um, I learned by being hands-on and have I made mistakes? Heck yes, I have made so many mistakes. I mean, if I'm, if I'm being honest with you, I have done projects where I didn't use waste yarn, I got halfway through the project and realized I didn't use it. And then all of a sudden, I don't know for what reason, all of my stitches started dropping. Like every other stitch would fall off and um, trying to go through and fix those is a nightmare. So I just scrapped it. And this has happened on a number of occasions. So just telling you it's okay to experiment. It's not the end of the world. It's just yarn. It's just yarn. You can find yarn at thrift stores. You can find yarn at, you know, yard sales online on Facebook free by nothing groups. So um, get in there, play around and experiment. So those are my top 10 tips and tricks for the circular knitting machine. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, again, if you have some other tips and tricks that you want to share, please put those down in the comment. I would love to hear from you. Also, let me know if there's other content you want me to show. If you want me to slow down a process, um, if you want me to cover the double stitching, I would love to talk about that. I just started doing that. Um, but I'm here for you and I just want to play around, create, and share with you what I learn as I go. So thank you so much, everybody, for stopping by. And until next time, see ya!